Hey guys, hope you're enjoying General Conference. Um, did take my last video down. I was just having a hard time. I've had a lot of I'm talking about. I talked about hairline today. Ironically, last week it I've watched videos of people going through chemotherapy and their hair is just coming out. Out, they're finding all over the place. That was happening to me because I've been under a tremendous, tremendous amount of stress the last several months. And and then my neighbor above me is just. It sounds of dropping a bowling ball, but repeatedly, like dumbbells, what it sounds like from one to three in the morning. And um, I don't know, since other neighbors don't hear it, they're going to do anything about it, right? It's not music. It's not a party, but it's vibrations right above my head. And I can't put my bed anywhere else. You know, it's, just, it's a studio. Um, so I've had severe lack of sleep more than I think ever in my life. And I'm trying to work full time. It's affecting my job, my health. And it's a lot of and just and, and do stress that I implied at. And I tried to be as vague as possible in this video, but I still just took it down. So basically, I've had a lot of people treating me really very poorly, but not telling me why, right? Glaring at me, laughing at me, making fun of me. Um, but the other some things being said that just aren't true. And this person was so specific, specific enough that I have redacted statements. So if you are someone physically around me and you are that person and you're really confused or want to know what's my side and you care to hear that my truth, I can easily prove the things being said are just not true. Um, and I had to bring up the mental health thing, but it's like, are you going to believe me in a YouTube video? Probably not. So like, what's the point? Um, but really I, I haven't been diagnosed with a bunch of crazy things as someone did claim that's one thing I'll be get specific crap out. And I was like, this is just not true. And where it came from and who was trying to be vague about that and it's hard to be vague about it. But um they they were just ignorant about my situation to me. I told this person several times, like no. And yet they'd claimed to have the exact same problems. But I been checked out and I don't have I don't have autism um could I have traits because a lot of autistics have pots a, a good chunk of them do I don't remember the exact percentage because a lot of them are sensory sensitive but they found a lot of them also have hypermobility and certain things like that but I've read books and autism I've worked with autistics I've saw a, seen a specialist and a lot of major creatures so like you have to match certain things in a DCM. I don't match, right? I just don't have that. And the things that do match are really related to a health condition that causes anxiety, but I deal with it. I deal with things. I've always been a super open my entire life, very open, very, very honest person. And often, You know, I think I can trust people and even good people sometimes shouldn't be trusted with certain information, right? So if anything else happens, like I'm probably going to tell no one until whatever it is happens. You know, I just made a mistake in 2018 and it's just hard. You just think people are just at such a high level and such a good person. You can tell them everything that's happening with the paper. And I didn't know they were connected to the another alleged photo, to say that very closely. I didn't know that. And so a lot of my emotions last summer, I was just, and I, a lot of people did like my video. I appreciate those that came. I couldn't say, but I knew, I knew that they knew who I was working with. And so the things they were saying were in a, inappropriate. I'll say that, but I won't get specific enough to accuse a specific person of saying something. And it was just being disrespectful. And I was having a hard time with that. I was just like, whoa, did you? And, and of course, I'm not super close. I won't say anymore. I, I just don't know. I was just like, what's going on? You know, and it's not like the other person would tell me because they're so professional. They wouldn't be like, tell me every conversation or what's every person that's contacted them, right? So, um, so it's been hard. I'll just try to 
to be not I, I just do want to address this. Um, I don't think I made a video. I'm going to show you real quick here. As far as the hairline, it was March. So there's two things. So actually, let's, I should put this on top. So it was March 1832. This is this whole description of, and see if you click on this, it'll take you to the journal entry. This is when he was tarred and feathered and mobbed and the twins were sick he lost a twin like the mobbing almost killed him but they do believe that that killed one of his adopted children those are the first children they ever had were adopted because emma had just lost a couple of, of twins herself and then someone else died that had given birth to twins and they got those twins the healthiest child was in joseph's arms and fell off the bed and snow was like all over this sick baby like it was coming in through the door it just really the cold went in and emma i, I don't know what happened to her how long it took her to get her bearings after sh she was almost they were they were threatening her in certain ways so um and like what would they say if that thing happened to her but we'd heard she had some threats i won't talk about but um it was just very bad Anyway, this specific sentence or two. And then he said he found himself going out the door. This is Joseph Smith Jr. It was like a dozen men, so like at least 12 men. Some had their hands in his hair. Some in his shirt drawers. Um, but I wonder if they pulled his hair out. So then they came to the door and infuriated. I mean, he was industriously struggling. Someone's got still got their hands in his hair. So they really drug him from the bed by his hair and his shirt and drawers and limbs, but not his arms because his arms, he was really strong. I think his arms were very, very strong, but he did have an injury as a child in his legs. Maybe that's why they were able to get his leg. I don't know. He, he was able to clear one leg with which he, he, he hit one man. I need to get rid of that little typo there. So they did have his, their hands in his hair. And then a few months later, he finally went to Missouri. He was supposed to be in Missouri when this all happened, and he didn't go. So it's one of those things, you know, it's like, even though he was a prophet, it's like you relate to, you're like, I should have just left. I should have just ran and pecked up my bags and been okay with not having nothing. It would have been better than this, right? And he, he could have been in Missouri and not been mobbed. So he was, you know, he's a prophet and he had that revelation. He didn't, so like he didn't, I mean, it's the same in our lives. We can receive revelation and feel that and like, why oh, should just, but he had sick babies, you know? And me, I was like, well, I physically can't run right now. Can't. I'm in severe physical pain. I'm, if I do any extreme exertion or lifting, anyway, I won't say anymore. Anyway, this was June and someone had been, he got stuck in Indiana coming back because there was a major injury of one of his, that was in his party and he just stayed with him for months to heal his leg. And so that's where this journal entry is. You can click there. It was brother Whitney. I think it was brother Whitney. And he talks about, and he has a lot of statements about things like this. So this is just a few months after the mobbing. They did try to put poison down his throat. He spit it out, but he also kind of wondered, did any get in? I don't know, because he, anyway, he was vomiting profusely large quantities of poisonous matter and so great that muscular contortions of his system, his jaw dislocated. And he's, he mentioned his jaw dislocating, I think, again. I'd have to find that again, but it's irrelevant to put on my website. But I think I did read that when he, he is, I found other journal entries of him vomiting and I think dislocating his jaw. So that's something interesting. To note, um, he replaced it with his own hands. And Brother Whitney gave him a priest a blessing, and he was healed in an instant. Although the poison had been so powerful that his hair became loosened from his head. So it could have been three things. Pulling hair from his head, um, tarred and feathered all over his face, could have pulled out and burned hair on the side of his head. Because um, Levi Hancock says... 
I couldn't put the link, it was Bope something, but a lot, a lot of times these links just don't work anymore. And so I can't find that journal entry. I believe it was on Bope. I don't understand what, why it was there and it's not anymore. I don't know. But um, I think maybe someone got the legal rights to his journals and wanted you to do this and that or pay. I, you know, it's one of those situations. So I love having a direct link, but I still might just get the quote again from my old website and just quote it and reference it because I have the date in the journal entry. But Levi Hancock said Joseph Smith showed him where his hair was pulled from his head and just didn't come back from the mobbing. But then he also had a lot of hair fall out in 1832. So this is 12 years before he died. So long intro. Here's my picture. So I've just more recently got this email. I won't say this is. Um, I try to say his eye sockets don't match. Just go to go to my website. Go to artistic facial analysis, and I think I t I think I popped to the videos in there, so you can hear me talk for five minutes about the eyes put the link on there hmm I'll go edit this again and make sure those videos are in there I was having a lot of trouble with my internet for a time and I had to fix it I put the video in there so you can hear me talk about it but just look at well you can just see they're so close together you can just draw a line straight down and see that they line up and the biggest thing is you can see that the left eye is lower than the right, and you see that in the death mask. And Dr. Niles Harrod specifically said you could see it, and it's a step deformity on the skull that he, Dr. Van de Graaff, and the three other guys from 2009, and then Joseph Lyons, and you could see a seventh one, another guy became a doctor, so it was really, in just a lot more people with other degrees that have analyzed the schools like in In Search of Joseph or Millie and Shannon Brother Joseph again. It's just a lot of people have agreed that the school buried is Hiram Smith is actually Joseph's. If you read In Search of Joseph, you see that there were statements by those present when they disinterred Joseph Hiram's bodies the first time. Um, the second time was in the 19th, in the 20th century, 1928. But this, their bodies were not decomposed. And he, Joseph still had his hair and his son cut a lock of his hair off. So he was, it wasn't that long after they died. I, I don't know if they got specific. I'd have to look at that. But it's in the book, In Search of Joseph. And that they noticed that Hiram's face was collapsing in. Okay. And not just on, on one side of the maxilla, right? So, um. It was collapsing in, like it was just falling in. His teeth were just falling in. Like he, there was a, a lot of damage to his teeth are falling in. It would be the maxilla. It would be like all of, you know, all of it. He just, he would be, so the skull buried as Joseph for some reason was the one with no facial bones. And we couldn't, they couldn't understand <clears throat> why they decided that in 18, 1928, but they just weren't forensic scientists. They just knew that Hiram was shot in the head and they could see a hole um, going through the, the side of the head. But Joseph was hit in the head, but his face looked pretty normal in the viewing. So I think when they hit him in the head with Peter Fife, I think it was his skull, the side of his head. And I think that's what broke that possibly. I'm not a forensic scientist. That's my theory. Because it seems to go all the way through. Like, they think they were hitting him in the head. Anyway, I don't know. But just the nose has that little bump on the right side. And just all these little details. See, there's a video of the nose, the lips. Did the video get dropped? There's that video. Well, I did the same type of these just couple minute videos, just talking and just analyzing this feature, that feature. And that's all the video is. So it matches really well, actually. So I just 
don't agree with that because forensic anthropologists thought that the eyes and symmetry match really well. And he said, Joseph, and I'm just disagreeing nicely. We can do that. That's okay to disagree. Sometimes when you're a woman, they just think you're mean no matter what, though. <laughs> if you have an opinion and you share it, you know. But men can because they're men. They have testosterone. <laughs> so Joseph had light colored hair and wasn't bald, but burnt from the tar. That is why he combed his hair forward. But it was very similar to something that was said six years before. And I've mentioned this before. This was a couple of weeks after I bought my photo. This is someone an anonymous. They wouldn't tell me who it was. Like, I'm quoting someone else. And then when I contacted the church history department, it was the exact same person probably going to this same person. I'm like, we're not getting anywhere. Um, they're just not, that's just what happened in 2017. It was, I'd gotten the milk on the 13th. It was like the 20th or something. But I found the vest. And the vest, I was like, wow, it's striped. But I can see these cross striations. Like, it, it's brocade. That's, I couldn't, I didn't know that's how you describe the vest that was verified to be owned by Joseph Smith and worn by him has stitching that goes up and down, but the hardcore stitching brocade just has designs and you've got these swirls and you got flowers, so many things on that vest that was Joseph Smith's, but it's not plaid. They just, oh, so you're saying it's plaid. I'm like, I didn't say that. And, and it's not plaid. Like they went on and on about plaid and how that what didn't exist. It didn't exist in the 1840s, guys. And I'm sorry if that's mean. I'll try to be nice. He said he combed his hair forward to hide a bald spot where his hair is permanently pulled out and he was tried and feathered in Hiram, Ohio. So what Levi Hancock said. Um, he doesn't get specific enough where. And this man does not comb his hair forward. He actually does because his hair is coming from behind his ears over his ears and it's covering his ears. You can really see on the left side, it's coming forward. You can see that line where the hair, hair is combed. It's coming forward. You've got hair coming straight out. And you see that in Maudsley's painting. Sometimes his hair is just kind of sticking out like that. Like he's got a little bit of pomade, but he, he's not putting that much in, I don't think. But he's, he's pushing it forward. But he's got a little bit of volume. You still see that in the forward-facing painting by Rogers. Anyway, he's so bald. Was another statement of bald. I'm not getting it that much, but this statement sounds so similar to the other guy. He could not, he would be unable to hide anything as Hancock reports. The eyebrows are too straight. The hair is too dark. So the hair being too dark, no. Like I, like I have had my hair colored because I'm just older and you kind of need to. As a woman, it's, I mean, I haven't really found gray hair, but like I've just color it. And lately, I'm just telling you, there's certain brands if you go to a professional hair store, maybe my hair is just as porous. I don't know. But blonde isn't blonde anymore. It's like black. So I keep buying. I, I got dark blonde and turned it black last summer. So I got medium blonde. It turned it darker again. But um, and it's, it wasn't even semi-permanent or demi-permanent. Like it was like this gloss that's not supposed to be, has like no chemicals on it, but it just sticks to my hair. And so it's not damaging. But anyway, on my old website, I had not colored my hair at all in like years. So I was like, this is my hair color. And I compared it to where the light hits my hair matched really well to that one little strand that's been sitting out in the sun on the top of a glass thing with a skylight in the Pioneer Memorial Museum. Would that, could that have very possibly, very likely bleached it more the last 200 years it's been i don't know how long it's been the pioneer memorials meeting but it's been around you know over almost almost 200 years um but it matched my hair where the light hit it and i did side lighting on my face and i showed that my hair matched that little strand but where my hair was in the shadow and even the hair behind that because it was such bad I did bad lighting on my own face. And then if you turned it black and white, like it could look this dark. And then if you look at the paintings, his hair wasn't platinum blonde. You just got so many, there's a lot of Norwegians in Utah. So there are a lot of like platinum blondes. And so they think he was blonde. He was blonde like you, dad. 
you know, like there's a lot, there's a lot of blondes in Utah. And so a lot of Utahns are mostly the ones commenting and getting upset about this because they're, they're blonde and they know people can be very, very light blonde. So they think Joseph had light blonde hair. Well, go ahead and grab that. <laughs> go look at the swatches in um, Cosmoprof that are called blonde. They're not very light because I think they've decided to expand the shade of blonde to cover every color of hair. So that's happened recently. Anyway, and his ears protrude with attached earlobes and they went on and on about plaid attached earlobes um, and the popped up collar and they didn't think popped up collars existed. But then I found so many photos that are verified to be 18, even 1839, 1840. I think there was 1840 that was in the Met that um, they knew. It was in 1840 pictures. The collars popped down. It was just as high up as this. It was popped down, just that thickness. Okay, and I was just sent that, and they just just kept arguing, but it, none of it stuck or disproved it. So I'm going to talk about the hairline and show you. First, here is Joseph Smith the third. But yeah, if, if you've been hearing horrible things about me, like in person, I can show you evidence that certain things, very specific things people are saying, and in an in instance, they were specific enough that I can show you evidence that it's just not true. Yeah. So. So minus this um, widow's peak that was really... But if you look at his hair, where it's receded back right there in the red, like he's barely in his 20s, and it started to recede more well into his 30s. And see how straight his eyebrows are? Very, very straight. Um, and the shape of his eye, very, very similar to the guy in my picture. Um, his nose is longer, so his nostrils drop down a lot lower. Uh, but a very more narrow face. So he doesn't have the high cheekbones that you see on the death mask. He's much more flat cheekbones, but he looks a lot skinnier. So a lot of times people think these cheekbones are equivalents of him being caught. But Joseph Smith had very high cheekbones. You can see that in the painting, which that part matches. But yeah, the straight eyebrows you see in the, his ears stick out. Look at his ears. Now placement ears and all that, that can change by just tilting. You take a bunch of photos of your yourself. That's why that 2011 paper was like, well, photoanthropometry, a lot of people are not good at it, and they'll just exclude something as someone for just things that can be explained, like a different camera lens, different things like that. It's just things can change so much just by angle of your face, camera lens, distance, things like that. So A very long face, very high forehead, very straight eyebrows, ears stick out. And then I'll just get this 16 year old, 16 year old David Hiram Smith, very, very high forehead, but you wouldn't say he's bald. I don't know why they're this. It seems, I think this is the same person saying he's so bald. Um, oh my God, I wouldn't say that. Because his hairline, see his mouth lines up with my guys. The nostrils, actually, I've got lined up in the eyes. His eye shape is exactly, looks just about where the crease of the eye is in the shape of the eyebrow. Very, very straight. Very, very high forehead. Okay. And who else said that? A lot of people. Okay, got the Weekly Gazette. So the shape of his head is very oblong, oval, like very long. So the son's faces are longer than this guy's. His chin isn't too long. Like frontal retreating, it's synonymous with receding in John Hammer's own ancestor. In the, in, he said it was the 1880s. The popular pictures were of the forefacing painting. Forehead wasn't right. How else could you interpret that other than the hairline the line where the forehead 
and it needed to be more retreated. It needed to be farther back. His hair was more receded than that. Joseph had lost some of his hair. Now, ascending small facial angles, somewhat symmetrical. It's clear they could tell it was asymmetrical. Lips thin rather than eyebrows are light and thick and deep, precisely that of a battle brow. Thick eyebrows. So, again, Tegan Lucas and Machi J. Hannenberg, they were more respected for their paper on, ironically, Desert News, religious paper, talking about, um, you know, evolution was included in there. And... But when they wrote about Joseph Smith, ignored by Desert News, um, they didn't think that Larson Lockett photo had a likeness. And I don't know who put that paragraph in there, but I think if they disagreed, it would have been taken out, is basically how it went. They wrote the paper, right? I was a contributor because I had done a ton of research, right? I contributed, but really they wrote it. And so my thoughts and opinions very on a lot of things. And I think I, I look really into details and stuff like that, but they wrote that. I didn't write that paragraph, that there was no apparent likeness between the Larson Lockhart photo and the death mask of Joseph Smith and all these pictures and things and statements. They, they're like, we don't see it. And I don't either. Like he, you do not see thick eyebrows on the Larson Lockhart photo. So I just, And it's in, and see, there's David Hiram Smith as a baby, really high forehead. And even on the sides, like she's already brushing his hair forward. And Joseph couldn't, could, was it from the mobbing or was it genetic that he didn't have sideburns? And it doesn't look like, I mean, it's still possible. doesn't look like they got the high forehead from the mother. Emma has, does not have a high forehead at all. Um, she does look like she has attached earlobes. I think she would count, she would match for that. Um, and then here's another statement. This I found in In Search of Joseph Benjamin Franklin Johnson was alive and around Joseph Smith. So that's verified. His eyes were shaded by long light eyelashes, bushy eyebrows again that were not arched, but ran straight across. The whole arrangement of eyes, lashes, and eyebrows is said to have produced unusual, even magnetic effect. Like, and, and it does, I think, make his eyes really stand out. And you can see that with the suns. You know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a beautiful feature to have like these straighter eyebrows. And interestingly enough, if you look at David Heim, so that the Trisha Street of I mean, I'm just disagreeing. I'm not trying to be contentious, but if you look at this, you would almost you would really think, especially looking at that left ear, like he must have attached ear lobes. So they kept saying, your guy has attached ear lobes. Looking at Masuk with Monsley's profile paintings, it's unattached. So it's not him. It's not him. Oh, and plaid didn't exist. And pop down collars, they, I mean, well, they did exist, but no, not much. I don't think Joseph. Those, I have like reread the emails. And we don't think he brushed his hair for it. He's bald. He's bald. He's bald. We're really upset about the bald hair, though. So that's why we're talking about this. But the ears. It's interesting, I was remaking this video, but David Hiram, it looks like his ears are attached in a lot of these forward photos. And this was sort of what was seen with Mosley. I'm gonna scroll, I think I have this specific picture. If not, I'll Google it and pull it up. But if you go to the bottom, I've got pictures of the sons. I should have put it on the top. See, the like, tip of her nose is a little bit higher. The tip of her nose is very low. Um, her nose is a little bit more like Hiram's. I would think her nose and ears a lot like Joseph's. And her ears stick out. Her ears look just like the guy in my photos. I think his ears stick out. Excuse me. I don't know. Would you say he's attached, unattached to your lips? I don't know. But anyway, there you go. You look at that. If you think here, oh, he must have attached earlobes, but then you look at this and it really looks like they kept showing me psycho and saying, look at that line, look at the line, the earlobes are like floppy. They didn't say that, but it does kind of has that line. So it looks like it really curves in and doesn't look attached right there. And that was sort of like, look at this. And they were zooming in, look at that. The ears are disproving it. 
And I'm like, I don't agree. I just, I just don't agree. So they really tried in 2017 and, but the friends like anthropologists for four years were, were vetting this when they had time went very slow and just so much was going on. They're both in Australia, the fires in Australia, um, COVID, their lockdowns were very severe in certain areas um, and being teachers and suddenly working online might have been very over you i'm sure it was overwhelming for all parents teachers it was a very hard time and that was 2020 and we started talking in 2019 and she was like oh it could take two years four years ago and it finally came out a couple months ago so it was almost at the four-year mark when it was finally published and she's like oh it could take up to two years but we really want to write a paper on this and we really think this could be him right and so that's what they say it likely is so they're not saying 100 percent. i want to be careful what i say um, I still really think it's him and, you know, moving forward, anything that happens, I am seeing this paper being published and recognized slowly by different websites that are scientific and it's gaining more and more interest by not members and not so much Utah. Although a lot of Utahns are looking at my website more and I'm getting more followers. So I appreciate those that have been. And again, if you are around me and it's probably just going to be people in this area that are hearing crap about me please instead of continuing to spread it come to me and i can show you privately redacted papers and things just showing no, this isn't what what i said at all and you can also watch my youtube videos you know i've just been consistent so i've redacted papers things she's consistent this is what she said without getting specific about horrible things being said about me that are ma making me be treated really poorly, even though the, what happened in of itself was so awful and horrible. Just being treated badly has been really horrible too. And it's just, but the Lord has been with me and, and I appreciate, you know, we just, I'll just do my best. I can't be specific, specific on the internet, right? So just privately, you can come to me and I can like, hey, Here's some redacted papers. Look at this. Please stop saying something happened that didn't. Anyway, have a good day.